So far, we have talked about how moving charges feel magnetic fields. Magnetic fields cause individual charges to move in circles. And on currents, magnetic fields force currents to one side of the wire via Hall effect, and they can even push the wire itself. Now, we are going to change tack. The previous lessons discussed how moving charges feel magnetic fields. This lesson will discuss how moving charges make magnetic fields. Before we begin this video, I want to remind you of something extremely significant. Magnetic field and magnetic force are not the same thing. The magnetic field tells you the direction that a compass needle points. The magnetic force tells you the direction that a moving charged object gets pushed. You need the magnetic field to find the magnetic force, but the two are not the same thing. Now let's look at a current. A current is a collection of moving charges. Remember, in an electric circuit, the electrons move through the wiring from the negative terminal of the battery to the positive terminal. These are the actual moving charges that would create magnetic fields. However, because there are so many electrons, it's easier to treat them in aggregate and work with just the current. Remember, the current is the flow rate of moving charged objects, but its direction is always opposite the flow of electrons. If a wire is perfectly straight and very long, the strength of the magnetic field it produces is given by this equation. This is Ampere's law. It shows that the strength of the magnetic field depends on two factors, the current, I, and the distance from the wire, R. You'll notice one new symbol, that mu zero in the numerator. That is a constant of nature called the magnetic permeability of free space. It describes how magnetic fields get weaker with distance. It's a universal constant. It is extremely important. In a few weeks, we will see why. For the moment, we will just treat it as a constant. Its value is four times pi times 10 to the power of negative seven tesla meters per ampere. That works out to 12.56 times 10 to the negative seven tesla meters per ampere. This equation is easy enough to use. If you have a current of two amps and you are located 0.01 meters away from the wire, you will feel a magnetic field of four times 10 to the power of negative five tesla. But as you probably noticed, this equation only gives you the size of the field. It fields are vectors, so we need to find the direction of the magnetic field as well. Here is where things can get a bit confusing. Let's start by revisiting how we did things before. Remember that when we need to find the direction of magnetic force on a particle, we used the right hand rule? And when we needed to find the force on a wire, we also used the right hand rule. In both of these cases, we point our hand along the first vector, bend our fingers towards the second vector, and this would give us the force. This right hand rule is used to find the magnetic force that something feels, but it won't work to find out the magnetic field that something makes. In fact, there is a second right hand rule that we have to use when something makes a magnetic field, and it is different from the one which we use when something feels a magnetic field. It works like this. Take your right thumb, point it in the direction of the current, then curve your right hand into an arc. Your fingers will point in the direction of the magnetic field. Again, this technique only works for wires creating magnetic fields. We used the other right hand rule 
when we're talking about something that is feeling a magnetic field. Now, let's look at an example. Here are two parallel wires, both 10 meters long. They both have a current flowing through them. The one on the left has a current of 2 amps flowing upwards. That's the positive y direction, also called positive j hat. The one on the right has a current of 3 amps also flowing in the positive j hat direction. The distance between the two wires is 0 0.02 meters. Each current is made of moving charges, so each creates a magnetic field and each wire feels the magnetic field generated by the other. Let's see what impact this has. We'll start by calculating the magnetic field created by the left wire at a distance of 0 0.02 meters. Ampere's law tells us the magnetic field created by current carrying wires, so that's what we need to use. When we substitute all the known values in, we get a strength of the magnetic field as 2 times 10 to the negative 5 tesla. That is the strength of the field at a distance of 0 0.02 meters from the left wire. Next, the direction of the field. Using the second right hand rule, the one for currents creating magnetic field, place your right thumb along the left wire in the direction of the current. Curl your fingers around. That shows you the direction of the magnetic field. So the right wire feels a field of 2 times 10 to the negative 5 tesla and the field is pointed in the negative z direction into the screen. That's the magnetic field that the right wire experiences. But magnetic field and magnetic force are not the same thing. So now we have to calculate the magnetic force that the right wire feels because of the left wire's magnetic field. The force that a current carrying wire feels from a magnetic field was discussed in the previous video. It is given by I L cross B. The vector L is the length of the right wire. Earlier, we said that was 10 meters. The direction of this vector is the same as the direction of the current, in this case positive y, also known as j hat. So that means that L is 10 j hat. B is the magnetic field we calculated earlier, negative 2 times 10 to the negative 5 k hat teslas. The direction of this cross product is determined by the first right-hand rule, the one for particles and currents that feel magnetic force. Try it. Your hand points along positive j hat, the positive y direction, and your fingers curl in the negative z direction, negative k. So your thumb points in negative x, also known as negative i. The current in the right wire is 3 amps. So the overall force is negative 4 times 10 to the negative 4th i hat newtons. The force is leftwards. The right wire gets attracted to the left wire. We see this in real life. When two currents flow in the same direction, the wires attract. In this puzzle, we first had to find the strength and direction of the magnetic field created by the left wire. We used this to find the strength and direction of the force felt by the right wire. Now, if you were to do the problem in the opposite order, that is, find the magnetic field of the right wire and the force on the left wire, you would end up with the same answer. In fact, try it out. Also, what would happen if the two wires had currents in opposite directions? When you work it out, it turns out that the forces end up being repulsive. In this video, 
we looked at magnetic fields generated by straight wires. In the next video, we will look at magnetic fields produced by curved wires and applications.